Computer hackers break into the networks of the world's largest telephone companies. Just a few keystrokes away from blinding air traffic controllers, shutting down banks, or cutting off military bases. It's not the plot of the latest cyber horror movie. The frightening penetration of the nation's telecommunication systems actually happened right here in North Texas. The hackers' target list included GTE's 28-state network, control from this nerve center at DFW Airport. They had the capability of causing a cyber Pearl Harbor, had they wanted to. FBI agent Mike Morris led the investigation. We had a number of telephone companies, uh, long-distance carriers and local exchange carriers that uh, thought they were impenetrable. They thought they were little castles. The first confirmed break-in occurred four years ago. That's when the hackers first took control of computerized phone switches like this one. The switches route calls around the world. The hackers gained unrestricted access to GTE, Sprint, MCI, and the regional Baby Bell networks. Their early attacks went undetected and alarmed top officials of the U.S. government. Details about the case are only now becoming public. They can listen in on calls made through that switch. If they didn't like a person, they could turn their access off to that switch, meaning if you tried to make a, a call out, it wasn't going to happen. A tip set in motion an intensive FBI investigation that continues today. In Dallas, a new cyber squad put a wiretap on the hacker's line. It marked the first time that agents could monitor everything a hacker typed. The goal of the hackers was to basically take control of telecommunications systems coast to coast. And they came close. These FBI surveillance photos show some of the 11 hackers called the Phone Masters. They gathered from across the country with cyber burglary tools in hand, a clone cell phone and laptop computer. The FBI identified Calvin Cantrell of Grand Prairie as a central figure in the organization. The hackers fit the FBI's profile, white males, teens to mid-twenties, self-taught and obsessed. He wasn't very good at school, didn't make a lot of friends, but when he gets on the internet and he hacks into a system now, he basically is, you know, it's a cyber god. Even though the typical hacker is uh, not a particularly good student, still they're brilliant. Some of these guys can be considered geniuses. Um, they're very smart and they get very bored with school. The FBI discovered that Cantrell was an unemployed 1988 graduate of Grand Prairie High School. At his parents' home, Cantrell spent up to 20 hours a day hacking into computer systems. The FBI says Cantrell took confidential credit and crime records out of computers and traded people's secrets for cash. Basically represented himself as an information broker. Cantrell sold personal information to private investigator Trace Carpenter of Dallas. He says Cantrell bragged about even getting phone records close to the president. That he was obtaining long distance records for Bill Clinton's mother. Um, and I suppose this was in an effort to find a back line into the Oval Office, so to speak. Indeed, the phone masters hacked into White House phone records and unlisted numbers, according to sources in the telecommunications industry. It shows just the vulnerability of our everyday systems that we use. Now, computer fraud prosecutor Matt Yarborough is trying the phone masters for stealing millions of dollars worth of long-distance calling card numbers. If these hackers had been foreign government agents, if they'd worked for Saddam Hussein, what, what could they have potentially done to the U.S. infrastructure? At least knowing and holding the keys to that system, any foreign agent or any domestic hacker could choose to crash it. And that could have a wide-ranging impact upon our financial institutions, power and electrical, uh, the systems we use and interact with every day. Well, the FBI says the phone masters discuss crashing vital computer systems. It's unclear what they may have done before the FBI got on their trail. The hackers declined a request for interviews. Gloria? I guess, Robert, everybody would like to know, where did the hackers get the know-how to break into these complex systems? Gloria is widely available out on the Internet. There are literally hundreds of sites giving the programs for breaking into computer systems. These hackers also used a technique called social engineering in which they would call the companies posing as employees. The companies then sent them state-of-the-art manuals. They knew the systems better than the phone company's own technicians. John? Hey, Robert, are, are the telephone companies still wide open to a cyber attack? Well, GTE, we're told, has taken extraordinary security measures. They even use their own computer scientists to try to break into the system the way hackers do. But sources in the industry tell us that many of the other telephone companies are just as vulnerable. Now, tomorrow night in our investigation, we'll have details on one of the fastest growing crime waves, Internet fraud.
John, Gloria. All right, thanks a lot, Robert.